Senior Life Journeys presents Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia, a podcast designed to help caregivers find knowledge, power, hope, and smiles in their dementia caregiving journey. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. Here is your host, best-selling author, Carol Howell. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. I'm glad you've chosen to join me again today. Well, we're going to continue our discussion from the class that I've been taking and um, see if I can help you learn a little bit more. But before I forget, I want to tell you that our next episode, I'm very honored to be interviewing, let me look at the, how to pronounce this gentleman's name, Mr. Sir. Surya Colery from the Bank of America, and um, the Bank of America has put together a report um, called Reducing the Cost and Risk of Dementia, and I was sent that information, and, and we'll be interviewing him regarding goal number five in their report, which is establish services and policies that promote supportive communities and workplaces for people with dementia and their caregivers. I think that's sort of important because I know a lot of you watching are working full time. And does your employer understand or even have a clue of what goes on in your home as the caregiver? Even if you are caregiving on a part time basis because your loved one lives somewhere else or in a community, it still has a drastic effect on you. And I understand that. And I'm glad Bank of America is working on that in this report. So we will be doing that on our next episode. But today I want to talk to you about risk for Alzheimer's, things that go on in your body that increase your risk for Alzheimer's. Well, I've told you many, many times that anything that's going on in your heart that's bad is bad for your brain. Anything that's good for your heart is good for your brain. So keeping your cholesterol in check, your blood pressure in check, making sure that heart is healthy is extremely important. Exercising, moving, going about so that blood can pump more freely and get good oxygenated, oxygenated blood to your brain. It's important. So we've got to have those things in place. Keeping our blood sugars level. We don't want to have high blood sugar. We don't want to have low blood sugar. Diabetes is a huge concern. It's a risk that doubles your chances for Alzheimer's. Yes, doubles your chances for Alzheimer's. So I say again, you need to stop and think about, are you going to eat those donuts and the ice cream and the Cheetos and the Mountain Dew? You're doubling, you're doubling your risk of Alzheimer's because you're most likely going to throw your sugar into a wonky state that's not going to be good and we don't want that. Being overweight increases your chances of Alzheimer's. Now, I'm sitting here and I've told you I've lost 100 pounds and I fight every day to get rid of what's still on me. And one day it's going to happen. I'm learning more and more about my gut microbiome having a huge impact on the ability to lose weight. And I am working on healing my gut microbiome because I want to reduce my chances of Alzheimer's. But I'll tell you, so many of you folks, not me, are overweight because you still eat the junk food. And there's just no junk food in my house. You can't eat bad stuff if you want to. We ain't got nothing. <laughs> it's boring. Yes, it is. But being overweight is bad for your heart, bad for your brain. Being overweight affects your blood sugar, leads to Alzheimer's. Do you see that cycle that's going on there? And somebody's got to break the cycle. Inflammation. We've talked about this so much. Direct connection between low-grade inflammation and Alzheimer's. Um, so wh what we know is inflammation cause, causes death of the neurons in your brain. We've got to eat healthy. We've got to move. We've got to reduce stress. We've got to rest. We've got to have friends and laugh and do fun things and learn new things all to help fight inflammation. But the singular most significant risk factor for developing Alzheimer's, I know you know what it is, and it's age. Statistically, by the age of 65, 10% of our population will have Alzheimer's. Statistically, by the age of 85, 50% of our population will have Alzheimer's. Well, now you'll remember the name of this show is Let's Talk Dementia not let's talk, to, let's talk Alzheimer's, because there's lots of reasons you can have dementia, and, all, and Alzheimer's is just one of them. So you throw in all those other reasons for dementia. We've got a lot of people like you who need help who are traveling this journey, either as the individual with the di di diagnosis or the caregiver. 
Women are affected disproportionately by Alzheimer's. One in six women are at risk for Alzheimer's. Now, why is that? Uh, well, hormones may be a big factor. Women metabolize lipids and fats differently. Glucose um, de dysregulation affects women differently. And when you go into menopause, if you use um, hormones, if you take hormones, if you don't take hormones, um, pregnancy factors, they're determined, discerned that pregnancy factors can have an impact on whether you develop Alzheimer's. Now, some of that you can't do anything about now. But going forward, we can. Um, in men, when women, one in six women are at risk of Alzheimer's, but in men, it's one in 11. If you don't believe that's true, go to any memory care community on the planet and count the number of men. There's more women than men. I say it's because the men have been driving us crazy. Again, do I hear an amen? I've got to get my amen buzzer. Somebody's got to figure out how to make me one and send it to me so I can push it and say, amen. <laughs> no, maybe that's not the reason, but I'm not sure. Two-thirds of all Alzheimer's patients living at the moment are women. Two-thirds of the caregivers are women. So you would think if more women had Alzheimer's than men, then the men would be taking care of the women. But that's not true. It's not the way that works. So families obviously are affected greatly. Caregivers die 60% faster than the loved one. Now, I've heard that statistic go everywhere from 40 to 60%. But what we know is it's having a drastic effect on families. And you know that. That's why you watch this show. And it's why I do this show. Okay. So, um, you partner um, of the, well, let me back that up. The partner of those who have dementia. Okay. The wife, the husband, the daughter, the son, whomever's taking care of them, have a six. 100, 600% increased chance of Alzheimer's. Why? Stress, anxiety, inflammation, not taking care of yourself, not eating properly, grabbing fast food, forgetting vegetables exist, all those things. See, so much of this is not genetic. It is environmental. I've said this forever, and I didn't even go to medical school. It's what we are doing to our bodies. It is environmental, and it's the effect our bodies are, the effect what we're doing to our bodies and the effect on our bodies by what we are doing. So these are all things that, that we, can, we can change. We can. We can make a difference in our future. Now, as I've said before, I hope that gives you some hope. So I want you to, tonight when you fix dinner, I want you to do a plant-based meal. I want you to chunk the meat for today. And maybe let's not do any cheese except potentially goat's milk cheese, which, P.S., I really do love. My daughter, I texted my daughter today. I had broccoli salad at lunch, and, and I had pepitas. Have you had pepitas? I did not know what they were, but it's a little seed, and I mix it with sunflower seeds, and I put it on top of my broccoli salad. And I had just bought some goat's milk cheese and um, crumbled some of that on my salad, and I wrote, broccoli salad? with goat's cheese is good and she wrote back goat's cheese is good on everything and i think she's right so plan um, a plant-based meal tonight maybe you're going to take sweet potatoes and chop them up in little squares and put them on a roasting pan in the oven and sprinkle maybe spray them with a little bit of um, butter spray or sprinkle some olive oil over them salt and pepper and roast that Maybe make a broccoli salad, and, and instead of mayonnaise, I use um, unsweetened uh, plain Greek yogurt, and I mix with that a little bit of sweetener and some apple cider vinegar. You can put some mustard in it if you like, and some salt, some pepper, add some garlic or garlic salt to it, garlic powder, however you want to use the garlic. Chop up an apple and put in it, and it's so very good. Then sprinkle those pepitas with some sunflower seeds mixed with it and a little goat cheese on the top. Oh my goodness, that's very, very good. I roast vegetables all the time, and it's just an excellent way to eat. And um, Or maybe you want pizza, okay? Well, I don't want you to give up pizza. Please don't tell me I have to. But we're going to get a gluten-free crust, right? Because it's just healthier for you. Or a cauliflower crust. There is a crust out called cauliflower, not cauliflower, cauliflower, P-O-W-E-R. I bought it at 
Publix or Walmart, I'm not sure which, and it's very good. And you can put on it whatever you want. Add vegetables to it and then put on top of that some goat cheese. It's good stuff. It very much is. Um, I, I'm about decided I'm going to share with you in an upcoming episode two recipes that I have found for um, pasta that is made 100% from vegetables. And the recipe that's on the back of the box is incredible and so good for you. Plant-based. Again, there's no meat in my house, so my husband's not going to come home to meat. Except, I do give you this exception. I give me this exception, so you can accept it if you like. I use bacon bits as a condiment. In other words, bacon bits, I don't eat bacon as a side dish. I eat a little bit of bacon bits sprinkled on top of my broccoli salad, but it's a condiment. It's not a main ingredient in my in my meals, so keep that in mind. Just give it a shot. See what happens. Yep, you might decide you like it. You might be surprised. <laughs> I hope so. One of my new favorite things is to go to P.F. Chang's. If you own a P.F. Chang's, girl, you need to call me and give me some gift cards because I go get their um, vegan lettuce wraps. Oh my goodness, they have tofu in them. Oh, it's so good. And I got their ginger broccoli chicken, but I said, no chicken, please. Could I possibly have tofu? And they said, why, sure. And I said, happy days for Carol. It's very good. They do the best broccoli there. Well, I'm making myself hungry because it's getting time for me to cook dinner. And my dog, wherever she is, is going to start getting upset because it's way past her dinner time. Go plan something healthy. Let's think positive thoughts. I bring you information that's slightly depressing about your chances for Alzheimer's, but all those chances can be reduced just by making some lifestyle changes. So come back for our next episode. We'll learn some more um, about dementia from Bank of America. See what they've got to say. Who would have guessed? Have a good day, you guys. Let's Talk Dementia would like to thank our sponsors, National Association of Veterans and Families. You can reach them at 800-352-2919 on the internet at www.navf.org. They speak veterans so you don't have to. And you tell them Carol sent you when you call to inquire about benefits for the veteran, the spouse of the veteran, or both. Editor Beth, you can find Ms. Beth Crosby at EditorBeth.com. She is amazing at looking at what you've written and making sure it represents you well. Find her at www.EditorBeth.com. And HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. That's York County. 803-985-0985. They are there for the hunt, the repair and maintenance of your Honda, Hyundai, Toyota, Kia. Tell them Carol sent you. Thanks for joining us today for Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia. To learn more about dementia, we recommend Carol's best-selling book, also titled Let's Talk Dementia. It's available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle versions. Be sure to like Let's Talk Dementia on Facebook and leave us a kind word of review on iTunes. Remember, knowledge brings power. Power brings hope. Hope brings smiles. And we all need more smiles. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll be right here when you come back to Let's Talk Dementia.